Hey everyone, Mint Morris here, uh, doing a little part two to follow up on what I talked about on Monday, if you're just joining. Uh, I've been talking about Jimmy Rivers and his use of blues. Um, I was just messing around there with using some major and minor pentatonics with some other stuff thrown in, but you know, Jimmy Rivers was great at combining both of those and really ran with the stuff that he heard uh, Lester Young, Charlie Parker, Charlie Christian, and Barney Kessel do. So what I thought we'd do is do a quick little recap of kind of how we combine that stuff, but then move more into how we start playing around with enclosures. So really that's transferring between one chord and another. So re quick recap, Monday we talked about combining major and minor. So for instance, if we have like a typical blues minor you know sounding lick like that what can we do to you know doll that up to make it sound more major sounding or dance between those major pentatonics well one thing we could do we could play up it and then when we get to this f if we're thinking major that g note is a part of the major pentatonics it's also part of our e flat chord so depending on where you are on the changes so we can th include that so you might do something We could do a triplet off of it, right? And that's just coming back down. Now that's one way of doing it. Another way is we could add the major third in. So play, you know, your minor sounding blues lick and come back down. So that's just F, E flat, to the D flat, up to the major third, and back down. So already you're sounding like you know more than just your minor pentatonics and your, you know, your kind of blues licks, right? So we've got... Throw in that major again. Reverse. Any of that. And that's kind of the basics of playing around with the major and minor stuff. Um, find it in all the little positions, you know, right? So that's just kind of the typical position we play out of, but work it up on here. Anything like that, right? So let's take that, let's take some of those ideas, but now what we wanna do is really nail the change between B flat chord and the E flat chord. So if playing a blues, this is the context we've been in, right? You've got B flat, E flat. So just take those first two bars of the blues change, right? So what we can do is set up a run that gets us from B flat down to A, down to A flat, then to G, right? Because essentially what we're doing here is playing B flat, down to the B flat but with the flat 7 and then we drop that to have our E flat 7 so let's try a lick let's do a little major sounding kind of more Charlie Christian-esque bingo right bum bum na 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 right so that sounds really nice to change between those two chords minor pentatonics, but dolling it up with, right, that D, the major third, and coming right back down to this G, just the third of E flat. So we could go, bum, bum, da, 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 da. right, and then you can play your kind of blues look after that, so... That works just fine. Now, what I like to do if I have this lick, right? I'm playing big fat quarter note and then if I want to have more bang for my buck with this lick, I'm going to now put in an extra note after this note and make it two eighth notes. So instead of going quarter, eighths, I might now go one, two, three, four. 
I've now got a whole eighth note line. So what I did here was just put the flat five in there. Kept the rest of the lick the same. So now it sounds like you've got two licks, so. Or. Right, so it sounds like two different things, but really you're just adding one extra note to it. So that's a, that's a thing you could do. Another thing you could do if you're kind of creating these on your own is add pickups to it. So simply just put a quick little eighth note before it, right? So maybe we could put the same note, one, two, three, four. Oh, sorry, one, two, three, four. Right, one, two, three, four. That's a way, now with the other way, one, two, three, four. So that's a, that's a possibility, right? Um, another way is just choosing another note outside of it. So maybe let's let's do let's do this G note. One, two, three, four. Right? Sorry, I screwed that up. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Right, you're dolling it up a little bit. Some more stuff is added. Um, let's take it from this E. One, two, three, four. Three, four. All of that. So it sounds like you got a completely different lick now. Another thing to do is we could play G to E, then to F. And that's in closing around F from above the F. So we could go one, two, three, two, three. Right? You got all of those different little options. So that's that's a way to kind of develop that lick. Now, another thing we can do, instead of just going straight down, we could go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Right, so we're picking up on the and, one, two, three, and four, come down, and then land up on the G. So what we're doing is approaching from below the G. One, two, three, four. With the added note, one, two, three, four. Three, four, one, two, three. And your your line already sounds like it has a lot more movement. And really the, the big thing there is like I was doing count, screw up a bunch, and then and keep figuring out where that falls in the beat. Because you want these to line up on the downbeat. And that's to say, you know, you can listen to other guys play and whatnot, and you know, they 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 play across the beat, you know. And that's fine too, or they'll play a little early. Uh, but just to get the time of it, just going one, two, three, four. Two, three. Two, three, four. So any of that is kind of where, you know, I think of when it comes to Jimmy Rivers. If you're, if you're trying to find something in your blues playing or in your jazz country, whatever, whatever it is, it's mixing these major and minor pentatonics, but then leading them into something else. So for his, for example, those just joining us and we're playing a B flat blues, just the first four bars, and I'm playing a you know a B flat blues statement, swing blues statement, but transferring between this B flat, B flat seven, E flat chord. changes even though I'm playing a ton of blues. Uh, let's try another one. So I, I started this off kind of referencing back to what I showed Monday night, which was this little... All right, so if you're playing on the second part where it's four to the E flat, you go one, two, three. Thank you. 
So that's kind of what I would what I would try and mess around with using those approaches, and this would segue you right into the first section of my course because we spend a lot of time, you know, playing around and finding all these little enclosures and segues between the one and four chord, which I think is the foundation of all. Because you know, if you can do it between the one and four chord, well, why can't you do it between the five and one chord? It's the same principle, right? So if you're playing, you know. I'm gonna play a little more jazzier, but he might do something. All right. Anything like that. Ah. <laughs> Anything like that is gonna get you in that direction. So mess around with that. Try it all out. If you feel like it, go check out the course. You can preview the second section of it that expands on some other elements of Jimmy Rivers playing. And if you have any questions, as always, please shoot me a direct message. I'd love to help. Thanks.